More than a month after her murder, the Thanksgiving series for eight-year-old Daniel Rowe was marred on Sunday by a chaos brought on by a family dispute that denied her a dignified send-off. The funeral, which took place at the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church in St. Catherine, erupted into disorder soon after members of Daniel's family began leaving the building as her father, Narval Rowe, was speaking. The elder Rowe, who is a police corporal was listed on the program to read the morning first scripture from 1 Corinthians 15 50 to 58. While he spoke, Danielle's mother, Sudan Mason, was the first to exit the church. As the service progressed, many other family members and close friends proceeded to remove themselves from the church pews, leaving the Reverend Francis West who was delivering the morning sermon. The relatives objected to the order of the service and claims that they had been excluded. The aggrieved family members protested that elements of the funeral program, such as the withdrawal of some activities to be undertaken by some family members, went against their wishes. It's not about them. It's about family. The mother never asked for that program. Them reprogrammed everything. The opening prayer supposed to be my mother. They put JCF, the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Why? What they got to do with anything? One family member questioned. Yvette Thomas, Daniel's grand aunt, was at the center of the commotion that ensued because she was outraged by what she perceived to be a government takeover, though there was no evidence of such. No politics. She na go down in a no politics. We no want them speak. She shouted in anger, encouraging the other family members to end the funeral proceedings earlier than scheduled. Them out of order to take me off of the program and put people where we no know, she continued. Attendee Carleen Smith, a former dancer and dancehall queen, persistently pleaded with the family to get along and go back inside the church. Listen, the man, come together, all of you. Get the mummy, get everybody. It's your service. Just do it properly, Smith urged, so the young one can get a good send-off. Following the funeral, the Ministry of Education and Youth sought to counterclaim made by Daniel's relative who insisted that the government was involved in amending aspects of the funeral program. In a statement, the ministry said that the government was not involved in the planning of the funeral and that Favor Williams had attended in her capacity as education minister and gave remarks. No other person from the government were engaged in the funeral, the statement read. Among those present at the service were Williams and a team from her ministry, Corporal Rowan James, Chairman of the Jamaica Police Federation, Iceland Golden Custos Rhetorium of St. Catherine, Fitz Jackson, Member of Parliament, MP for St. Catherine Southern, Leon Thomas, Mayor of Portmore, Commanding Officer for St. Catherine, South Superintendent Christopher Phillips, and other JCF personnel. Before Daniel's father read from the Bible, he thought back to the last time he had seen his angel, which was on May 16, the day she turned 8. This is not a good day, he declared, referring to the fact that he had to bury his daughter, who he characterized as being the most loving and compassionate person he knew and that she was not deserving of such a gruesome death. Young Daniel was abducted on June 8 from outside the school gates of Brayton Primary and Infant School, which is located in the St. Catherine South Police Division in which her father works. She had been left for dead with her throat slashed. When she was found along Roosevelt Avenue in St. Andrew later in the day, she was subsequently transported to the Bustamante Hospital for Children, where she succumbed to her injuries two days later. Her horrific death has since sparked outrage island wide and has led to several protests with persons calling for a resumption of the death penalty for her killer. The latest protest was on Friday, 
when family and friends took to the streets bearing white placards mirrored with red paint and marched at the intersection of Arthur Wint Drive and Roosevelt Avenue close to where she was found. The autopsy that was conducted at the House of Tranquility Funeral Home on June 19 revealed that little Daniela died from an incised wound to the neck. The police revealed that it is believed that Daniela knew her killer. They also released a sketch developed using an electronic facial identification technique of a female of interest in the case. There has been a whole lot of speculations, a whole lot of rumors, some absolutely disgusting statements have been made, the elder Rose said. He continued by saying that his daughter, who desired to be a veterinarian, would constantly check on him and ensure that he was okay and to show her affection. Meanwhile, Danielle's mother was inconsolable throughout the service. And at the burial site, her screams of grief and despair being bellowed from her frail frame were a heart-wrenching sight to behold. And she could not keep herself together and fainted repeatedly. She and other relatives were dressed in blue as this was Danielle's favorite color. Williams said in her remarks that many Jamaicans felt a rage of emotions in response to the heinous act against Daniel, including anger and hurt. She added that this was made worse by the fact that the investigations have not yet determined who ought to be held accountable. As such, Williams encouraged the congregation to honor Daniel's memory by cherishing lives and spreading love. Let us be kinder to one another, more patient and more compassionate. That's what we need right now, she said. The minister also emphasized that Daniela was a child of much promise and potential, a daughter, a classmate, and a Jamaican who was described by her teachers as reserved, soft-spoken, and well-behaved. She was also among the top students at her institution, placed in third overall and first among the girls in final exams. I ask, is there no one who saw anything that could help the police in their investigations? I appeal for anyone with information to step forward as the attacker or attackers must be brought to justice, Williams said. You know, this thing about this little girl, every time it comes up, I just get all teary-eyed and emotional because at eight-year-old, like what could you do, what could you do to someone for them to do you that you, you have done nothing you are innocent whatever goes on between adults whatever the situation is it has nothing to do with you as an eight year old child you know children are innocent you know and it's just painful and i can't imagine what the parents are going through and when i heard all oh, the mother was inconsolable and she just keep fainting and passing out it's like it as a mother it just gut wrenching and gripping because i just can't imagine i don't think anyone can imagine the magnitude of the pain that she's feeling because as a mother when you go through certain things with your children nobody can understand and feel oh inside your stomach feels so hollow and so empty so i just can't imagine what little daniela's mom is going through yeah and her father is must be heart-wrenching what he's going through yes but you know i speak on the side of her mother you know and so on and little daniela sleep in peace i swear it's just absolutely painful this whole thing Ah. <sighs>